November 4th, 2023, Monday of the first week of Advent, presented by Catholics Read Scripture 2. Contents. Following opening prayers, we will move on into today's readings, cover our Saint of the Day, St. John Damascene, go over an excerpt from our Daily Church Father, St. Ambrose, go through an Advent Daily Reflection from Father Donald Haggerty, and then close again with prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah of Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest mountain, and raised above the hills. All nations shall stream toward it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us climb the Lord's mountain, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may instruct us in his ways, and we may walk in his paths. For from Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and impose terms on many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. One nation shall not raise the sword against another, nor shall they train for war again. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The Word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoice because they said to me, We will go up to the house of the Lord. And now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem, built as a city with compact unity. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. According to the decree of Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. In it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you prosper. May peace be within your walls, prosperity in your buildings. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Because of my relatives and friends, I will say, Peace be within you. Because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will pray for your good. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion approached him and appealed to him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, suffering dreadfully. He said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion said in reply, Lord, I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man subject to authority, with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, Go, and he goes, and to another, Come here, and he comes. And to my slave, Do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed, and said to those following him, Amen, I say to you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I say to you, Many will come from the east and the west, and will recline with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the banquet in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's saint of the day is Saint John Damascene. He grew up under Islamic rule and became one of the doctors of the church. 
Today, we have an excerpt from his writings on the use of icons in the church. In other ages, God has not been re represented in images, being incorporate and faceless. But since God has now been seen in the flesh and lived among men, I represent that part of God which is visible. I do not venerate matter, but the creator of matter, who became matter for my sake and dined to live in matter and bring about my salvation through matter. But I do not venerate it in absolute terms as God. How could that which, from non-existence, has been given existence, be God? Is not the wood of the cross three times blessed matter? And the ink in the most holy book of the Gospels, are they not matter? The redeeming altar which dispenses the bread of life, the Eucharist, is not matter. And before all else, are not the flesh and the blood of our Lord matter? Either we must suppress the sacred nature of all these things, or we must concede to the tradition of the church, the veneration of the images of God, and that of the friends of God who are sanctified by the name they bear, and for this reason are possessed by the grace of the Holy Spirit. St. John Damascene you sensed God calling you out of the world to a place where you could enter into deep communion with him. In that holy monastery, you were formed in virtue and holy learning. God then used you in remarkable ways for the good of the church and his glory. Please pray for me that I will embrace the deeper conversion I need so as to be better equipped to serve God as he wills. St. John Damascene, pray for me. Jesus, I trust in you. Daily Church Fathers, The Seven Gifts of the Spirit by St. Ambrose. So then, the Holy Spirit is the river, and the abundant river which, according to the Hebrews, flowed from Jesus in the lands. As we have received it prophesied by the mouth of Isaiah, this is the great river that flows always and never fails. And not only a river, but also one of the copious stream and overflowing greatness, as also David said, the stream of the river makes glad the city of God. For neither is that city, the heavenly Jerusalem, watered by the channel of any earthly river, but that Holy Spirit proceeding from the fount of life by a short drought of whom we are satiated seems to flow more abundantly among those celestial, celestial thrones, dominions, and powers angels and archangels rushing in the full course of the seven virtues of the spirit for if a river rising above its banks overflows how much more does the spirit rising above every creature when he touches the low-lying fields of our minds as it were make glad that heavenly nature of the creatures with the larger fertility of his sanctification and let it not trouble you that either here it is said rivers or elsewhere seven spirits. For by the sanctification of these gift, seven gifts of the Spirit, as Isaiah said, is signified the fullness of all virtue, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and strength, the spirit of knowledge and godliness, and the spirit of the fear of God. One then is the river, but many the channels of the gifts of the Spirit. This river then goes forth from the fount of life. Daily Advent Reflection Reflection from Father Donald Haggerty Authority Exercised for Love The training of a soldier in the United States Marine Corps has an intimidating element. The physical demands are rigorous, yet manageable for most candidates. The real challenge of a Marine boot camp comes in the testing of a young recruit to take the harsh backlash of a platoon sergeant without wilting. A veteran Marine then in seminary studies once told me he found obedience relatively easy after boot camp. The Marine officers he served with elicited strong respect as men sincerely concerned for each member of their units. The Roman centurion who asked for a cure of a paralyzed soldier under his command is praised for extraordinary faith by Jesus. 
the centurion has an absolute conviction that by a single word from afar, without seeing the soldier, Jesus can perform this miraculous cure. His intuitive sense of Jesus as a man of divine power is clear. He also draws Jesus' admiration because he is a humble man, despite his importance. I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. What is perhaps missed is how appealing to Jesus is the love of this Roman officer. The concern of the centurion for the soldier under his command wins the heart of Jesus. One wonders whether this Roman centurion was in Jerusalem that faithful Friday and was recognized from the cross by Jesus. Heavenly Father, grant us in this Advent the grace of a deeper conviction of faith and a humble concern for those in need. Closing Prayer St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to God in the highest.